Cynthia Stotler has been on both sides of the sick bed, a cancer survivor herself. Her husband Dave cared for her while she was sick, and she too cared for her husband and both parents before they died. Today, Cynthia shares what she learned through such a trying time in her life in her new book, A Caregiver's Companion. Welcome, Cynthia. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about that journey, especially, first of all, with having cancer and being taken care of by your husband for a while. Well, he was an absolutely amazing caregiver, and he was a role model for me. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave made it seem very effortless, and he had a great sense of humor uh, in doing it. Uh, he was um, what most women would marvel at because he was the cook, uh, and so it was wonderful to have someone. It's always who, good to have a husband uh, yes, that, could that cooks. Cook. <laughs> yes, yes. In fact, most sons loved to cook because they thought it was normal. Mm -hmm. You know, all guys cook. Of course. And it was lovely. Um, and so when I had cancer, uh, Dave was always affable. He was always very supportive. Uh, he was the sunshine. Mm -hmm. And so when you had a bad day, he was there to support you and, and very much did that. Uh, and he did it without a lot of support from other people because he was kind of a quiet guy, private guy, mm. uh, and didn't ask for a lot of other people coming in and helping. Yeah. Uh, so he did it by himself. Uh, when, when the tables were turned uh, and he had cancer, um, I knew I was going to need more support because I don't cook. I don't really yeah. like to cook, and it's not my best thing. And we needed more support because the kids came in to visit a lot. Uh, he was given a much shorter diagnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, when we went into the oncologist, we found out that uh, from the first visit with the oncologist, he was only given a week to, to a month to live. Wow. They put him on chemo, and uh, he did manage to survive six months. But it was a very intense and a very trying six months. Um, you even said in the book that he was a better caregiver than you were. Yes. And he would tease you about that yes, yes. while he was sick. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And so uh, when both sons would come visit and bring all six grandchildren at the same time and the house was full of people, uh, basically I put out kind of an SOS uh, <laughs> for food. <Yeah. laughs> uh, Stock need, up the freezers. Yes, we need help. Yeah. And it, it was lovely. Uh, my Sunday school class and uh, my bridge class both, they were amazing. And they would just ask, you know, well, what kind of food do the kids like? And, yeah. and food just showed up. Uh, in fact, uh, some of my friends from Chicago that would also come down and visit us, uh, they would marvel at the fact that just all this food would mm. miraculously appear. Sense of community. Yeah, very much a sense of community. Now that year was a tough year. It was a tough year. Because you lost Dave, but you also lost your dad, who yes. you were also taking yes. care of. Yes. Um, my father had been through two and a half years of very severe illness. Mm. He had myasthenia gravis diabetic retinopathy so he was blind and uh, he was a severe diabetic and so he was in a wheelchair and uh, really didn't have much in the way of motor skills mm. uh, and so Dave and I had together been caregiving for him for about two and a half years uh, and I'd been going over every day to work with him um, when Dave was diagnosed dad was already kind of on his downhill mm. decline and my father fell and broke his back in February and then fell again about two weeks later and then went into a sharp decline. And so my father passed away in April and Dad pa and um, then Dave passed away in August. So it was a tough year. Yeah. And, and a couple years before that, your mom yes. had passed away. Yes. And she had had a very hard couple of years immediately prior to her final days. Um, she had cancer and... Um, she had spinal stenosis, which is a very painful uh -huh. disease, and then uh, osteoporosis. And, <laughs> wow. and, and so, you know, I think when you're caregiving for people, as they get older, frequently they're suffering from three, four, five different mm -hmm. illnesses, yep. and that's not unusual. And so there's often multiple doctor's visits, there's often multiple diagnoses. And depending on their personalities, um, it's... Some people take it better than others. Some people take it better than yeah. others. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I think for the person who's the caregiver, 
uh, there's going to be different challenges with the different person that you're going to be dealing with. You know, for working with my mom, uh, she had um, much more persnickety and much more um, challenging personality. Mm. My dad was very easygoing, um, very sweet, very kind. Mm -hmm. Uh, Any time that you would visit him, he even though he was almost blind completely, he would mm-hmm. say, "Oh, are you wearing turquoise? <gasps> you look so pretty in ah, turquoise." Wow! You know, wow. and so bless his heart, he would try to make the absolute best of yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. Um, and and Dave was very good to work with, uh, stubborn, um, and so I think the challenges with Dave were trying to get him to comply with the doctors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they would tell him that he would not want to walk her and he wouldn't want to use one, so he would fall. Mm. And then you'd feel bad that he had had that fall. Right. Um, right. Because you weren't... You took on the responsibility. Yeah, you weren't, you weren't able to talk him into what the doctor was wanting him to right. do. So as you're walking through this, I mean, if anybody could tell the story of, of how to be a caregiver, it's you. You've gone through it time and time again. Yes, sadly. When you When you decided to write this book, <laughs> was it just... I need to put this all down because you, you say that you had a lot of friends also that were going through the same things that yes. you were going through. What I've realized is that many of my friends, and I think it's a function of age, yeah. I'm a late baby boomer, um, that many of us are dealing with either our parents mm-hmm. uh, and or our spouses mm-hmm. uh, and that it's becoming a very common thing for those of us who are in our 50s and 60s to be dealing with, you know, that you've got your parents that you're dealing with, and sadly, many of us are dealing with a spouse that we've got as well. Um, And it's a challenge. Do you bring them into your home? If it's your parents, um, are there, what kind of supports do you use? Do you Mm -hmm. have um, extra help come in? Do Mm -hmm. you do it all yourself? Mm -hmm. Do you look at nursing home situations? What kind of things do you do? Um, And then if you're Christian, how does that play into it? And how do you use God to support you? And and how do you strengthen that relationship that you have? Or if you don't have a relationship with God, how do you find God? And how do you stay sane? Yes. How do you stay (laughs) stress-free? Because you're dealing with this person and their issues. And it could become stressful, I could imagine. It is very stressful. Um, We flew out here yesterday and, and... a friend of mine, Tammy, who designed the cover for the mm-hmm. book, um, came with me and and um, they announced on the plane, well, you've got to put your oxygen mask on first before you put the oxygen mask on for the, the children. Right. And, and, and it's the concept of you've got to take care of yourself first before you can help take care of other people. Mm-hmm. And that's very true when you're caregiving for other people. If you let yourself get so run down that you don't have the energy and you don't have the wherewithal, then you can't take care of your loved ones. And so you do have to get your nap out. You do have to eat right. You do have to go ahead and do do your doctor's visits Mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what happens is that you are so caught up in, well, I've got to get them to their doctor's appointments and I've got to do this and I've got to do that, that you forget and, and or you put yourself further and further back to the end of the line yeah. Yeah. and you don't take care of yourself and you go downhill and, and you see it a lot especially in elderly people taking care of their spouse mm-hmm. if it's an 80 year old wife or husband taking care of their spouse mm-hmm. the the person who's not as sick actually dies first mm-hmm. uh, because they've run themselves down right and you can't let that happen So you have to make a conscious effort. One of the things also that I found really uh, inspiring and enlightening while reading this is forgiveness is a huge step. Yes. In all of this. Yes. That the caregiver needs to forgive the person that's ill Mm -hmm. for getting sick. Sometimes that's very true. Or you may not have had a good relationship with them. Yeah. Um, My mom and I didn't have the best relationship all through life. Mm -hmm. Um, We had just had a tough tough time. Mm -hmm. She had been sick a lot when I was young and I'd gotten farmed out to other family members Mm -hmm. and we had not had a good relationship and that had never gotten better. Mm -hmm. And I kept hoping that when we moved her to Topeka, it would get better. And uh, she got so sick so fast that we just didn't have time to heal a lot of that. And so, yeah, there was some forgiveness that we had to do um, because 
then she went into kind of an Alzheimer's state and even my mother admitted she was kind of wicked mean. Mm. <laughs> and, and you would do a lot for her and then she'd still be yelling, screaming and hollering at you because you weren't doing as much as she thought. She'd forget that you'd been there. Um, quick example, um, she came home from being in the hospital for two weeks and Dave and I had done um, a big party for her. Mm -hmm. we'd, we'd put banner across the driveway, welcome home. Yeah. And we had all of our little friends over for that afternoon and we thought we'd done a really nice thing. And, and then we actually thought she might want to be with dad just for the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And so we let them be by themselves. Yeah. And I get a phone call about two hours after that and she's screaming and hollering about, well, why aren't we there? Oh, wow. um, and so you think you've done something good, yeah. but yet you're going to get hollered at. Yeah. And so you have to forgive that, yep. and you have to realize that from her perspective, it wasn't what she wanted. And don't internalize and it. And not internalize that. Yeah. yeah. And just to realize that you still have to take care of her. Right. And that's okay. Right. Some of the things that I thought were very cute in the book was having a bubble bath. Yes. You know, spending some time alone. Yeah. You know, music and yeah. how, you know, we were just talking about our offer this month, but how important music can yeah. play. Praise role. and worship music is wonderful. Yeah. Um, I've gotten to where I, I really only listen to, it's family life radio, but it, I only listen to praise and worship music anymore. I just find it very uplifting and very meaningful, very helpful. Um, one of the songs that I love is Laura Story's Blessings. Mm. I think that um, we do frequently pray for things that are what we think are important to us, but that's not always exactly what God gives us. Right. And we have to be grateful for what we do have. Right. Um, and we have to take that. I think um, gratitude journals yeah. can be very important. Um, I, I know it sounds odd, but and probably challenging while you're in the midst of all of this. Uh -huh. But one of the things that I did that helped me through cancer myself was to have a gratitude journal and I forced myself to write down two or three positive things. And even if it was that they made a fat-free chocolate chip cookie um, and or that I was able to keep them down that day, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would write that down. Uh, and the day that Dave died, I actually started a gratitude journal. Uh -huh. um, and. One of the things that I found was that even on some of my darkest days where I really felt very depressed, there were still two or three things to be positive about mm -hmm. and that God showed you that there was something um, and or, you know, you'd be driving home and you'd have a really bad day and the, the um, sun would come out or there'd be a magnificent uh, sunset. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like I put it there just almost for you, yeah. just to remind you of his presence and what a glorious world it really was. You, brought, you brought along some pictures as well that yes. we want to be able to, yeah. to look at before our time is done. Um, this is the whole family. Uh, Dave died three weeks after he turned 60, and mm -hmm. that's Dave in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, our eldest son, Eric, is uh, to his immediate side, uh, and his wife and the kids down below, and then our youngest son. Your grandkids. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then this is my mom and dad um, next to David uh, when they moved out to uh, Topeka. One of the things that we did was when my mom died, we started a memorial garden. She was an avid gardener. Mm. And so uh, rather than just have flowers, we decided to start a memorial garden at the church. It's a great idea. And uh, did that. Uh, Dave got to do one of his bucket list trips right before he got diagnosed. And this was a trip down the Amazon. Uh, and it was a very neat trip. And there's two of our best friends, Betty, Betty and Phil. And this is right before he passed away. Mm. What's one thing that, oh, there's And that was me. Um, one of the things that we did was what we called a coast to coast recovery tour after I got cancer. And that was, uh -huh. um, we went out to California. What's one thing that you think caregivers need to remember? We only have a couple seconds left, but one thing to keep in mind, especially when you're in the midst of it all. Um, Read the Bible, yeah. um, reconnect with God, uh, realize that He is there for you. Mm -hmm. um, in Philippians, it talks about focusing on all things lovely and all things mm -hmm. beautiful. Uh, there are a lot of lovely and beautiful things out there to focus on. Mm -hmm. This book is also available in our e-store as well. Um, so you can go to crossroads.ca or call us at 1-800-265-3100. There's so much 
in this book. It, I mean, it looks quite small, but there, it's packed, Cynthia, with so much information. And so definitely if you want to grab your copy of this, you're, you're going to want to do that. Again, Cynthia, thank you so much. Thanks very much, Michael. For being with us I and sharing it. such an important time in your life and being able to put it together in this book to, sh to share with so many other people. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I appreciate it.